The rest of our lecture is going to be all about bacteria. And we start with bacterial cell morphology, means shape of the cells. Remember I told you uh, bacteria are a very diverse group. They can be in different shapes and different sizes. But for this class you have to know three different types of bacterial cell morphology. The first one is called it's called coccus or cocci for plural. Those are round cells. And the first two slides show you pictures of cocci. Bacteria also can be rod shaped and we call them bacillus or bacilli for plural. And the next two slides show you pictures of bacilli. In the last group we call them spirals or spiral kits and the last two slides show you pictures of spirals. Speaking about round cells, cocci, as they divide sometimes they stick to each other in certain specific way and form very specific what we call arrangement. Again, for this class you have to know three types of arrangement of cocci because there are more than three but we have to focus on just three main ones. So they can form pairs or we call diplo cocci. As an, as an example we can use Neisseria gonorrhea which is gram-negative diplo Caucus. Also, round cells sometimes can form clusters, like grapes clusters. As an example, we use Staphylococcus species. They all form clusters. And the last one, they also can form chains, or we call it strepto. As an example, we can use Streptococcus species because most of them form arrangement chains. From this slide uh, we start talking about uh, structure of bacterial cells and we begin um, with external structures and the first one is going to be capsule. Most bacteria can uh, form capsule which is usually sticky, slimy, outermost layer of the cell. Most of the capsules are made from polysaccharides. The principal function of the capsule is protection against drying out and phagocytosis. Capsule is also known as virulent factor virulent factor of bacteria because if pathogen has a capsule it means it becomes virulent means it can cause infections in humans. As an example we can use Streptococcus pneumonia very serious pathogen with a thick mucoid capsule can cause life-threatening infections, meningitis, pneumonia. Another example can be methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA. Why are those pathogens so aggressive? Because they have thick mucoid capsule. Very often if for some reason pathogen loses its capsule it becomes non-virulent or non-pathogenic. What does it mean? It will not cause infection. Why? Because it will be killed by phagocytosis. The next one is flagella. Flagella are thin structures that extend out, of, uh, out from the surface of the bacterial envelope and the function of flagella is locomotion or movement. All flagella 
are made of proteins, we call them flagellin, and each flagella has three parts. The most outer part is called filament. It is connected to hook, and hook is attached to what we call basal body. Basal body penetrates cell wall of bacterial cell and causes flagellum to rotate. There are four types of flagella you have to know. The first type is called monotricus, which means single flagella. The second one is amphitricus, means single flagellum that extends from each pole of bacterial cell. And then the next one is lophotricus, two or multiple flagella extended at one from one or both poles. And the last one is pyritricus, multiple flagella from a lower surface of the cell. Next term, chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is the ability of bacterial cells to sense certain substrates and then move towards them if they are recognized as nutrients or run away from them if they are recognized as harmful ones. There are two types of chemotaxis. Run, which is counterclockwise movement, and the tumble, clockwise movement. On this slide, they show you how bacteria perform run and tumble. So as you see, when pre bacteria perform run, they pull all multiple flagella into one, form rope-like structure, and then as it propels, it pushes cell forward. When bacteria perform tumble, they release all multiple flagella and start moving sideways. There is another type of flagella you have to know. It is endoflagella or axial filaments. There is only one group of bacteria that have this type of flagellum and those are spirals or spirochids. So why do they need this special type of flagellum? Because spirals or spirochids live in a very thick, viscous environment. For example, mucus on the surface of the mucous membranes or mud. So they need to create unique form of movements. Each endoflagella is composed of two bundles. Each bundle is attached to the pole of the cell and then they wrap around the cell body extending about the halfway up to the cell. With the help of endoflagella or axial filaments, spirals move in a corkscrew manner. Next external structure uh, is what we call pili. Pili are hair-like structures that extend from the surface of the cells and the main function of pili is attachment. Please remember most gram-negative bacteria have pili, many gram-positive bacteria do not. Pili are made of protein and uh, this semester we are going to talk about another type of pili we call it sex pili. Sex pili have different function. Sex pili has a uh, sex pili are used for communication of bacteria and we will talk about it later. 
The next structure is cell wall. The cell wall is a part of what we call cell envelope. Cell envelope is a structure that covers bacterial cytoplasm. And different types of bacteria have different structure of this cell envelope. But this semester we're going to focus on two groups of bacteria. We call them gram positives and gram negatives. Gram negative bacteria have three layers in their cell envelope. Gram positives have two layers in their cell envelope. The most inner layer is called plasma membrane or cell membrane. And the second layer on the top of it is called cell wall. Cell wall maintains shape of bacterial cell. Remember, cell wall of all bacteria is made of very specific structure. We call it peptidoglycan. Let's talk about structure of peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is a polymer and like all other polymers it's made of monomers which are sugars. We call them NAG and NAM. They link together, they connect to each other and then those sugars connected to each other with protein chains. And this is what you see on this slide. You see NAM is connected to NAG and then the next one is going to be NAM again and the next one is NAG and those sugars are connected to each other with peptide or protein chains. What you have to remember about peptidoglycan is it is not a solid structure. It's a mesh-like structure. On this slide uh, you see a picture of cell envelope of gram-positive bacteria. It's composed of two layers the most inner layer is called cell membrane or plasma membrane and the second layer is cell wall and as you see it's made of several layers of peptidoglycan and that's right the cell wall of gram-positive bacteria is thick and there's another additional structure that holds those layers of peptidoglycan together it's called Tachoic acid. Tachoic acid penetrates layers of peptidoglycan and gives this cell wall some integrity, stability. Now let's talk about cell envelope of gram negative bacteria. Remember, cell envelope of gram negative bacteria has three layers. The most inner layer is called cell membrane or plasma membrane. The second layer on the top of it is called cell wall and of course it's made of peptidoglycan. And the third, the most outer layer is called outer membrane. The function of outer membrane is protection. It protects gram-negative bacteria from phagocytosis, complement system, and antibiotics. And that explains why gram-negative bacteria are more resistant compared to gram-positives. Outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria is made of LPS. LPS, LPS stands for lipopolysaccharides, lipop 
proteins and phospholipids. On this slide, you see picture of cell envelope of gram-negative bacteria. As I said, cell envelope of gram-negative bacteria is composed of three layers. The first, the most inner layer, is called plasma membrane or cell membrane. The second layer is called cell wall and as you see it's only made of one layer of peptidoglycan that's right cell wall of gram negative bacteria is thin and there is no thicoid acid in its structure and then the third layer the most inner outer layer of this cell envelope will be what we call outer membrane and uh, it's made of LPS and remember please it's also known as endotoxin ex exotoxin excuse me it's called exotoxin to be more specific lipid A portion of LPS is known as exotoxin All right, let's summarize what we've just covered and uh, let's compare structure of the cell envelope of gram-positive bacteria to the structure of cell envelope of gram-negative bacteria. Gram-positives have two layers in their cell envelope. Their cell wall is thick because it's made of several layers, several layers of peptidoglycan and remember Tequic acid goes through all those layers and holds them together. Gram-negative bacteria have three layers in their cell envelope. Their cell wall is thin because it's made of one layer of peptidoglycan. There is no tequic acid in the structure of the cell wall of gram-negative bacteria, but they have additional layer, third layer in their cell envelope, we call it outer membrane and outer membrane is made of LPS and also is known as endotoxin. Cream stain procedure. Uh, what you have to, to remember is um, we're going to talk about gram stain procedure uh, in uh, great details uh, in our labs. But for now, um, you have to remember that we use uh, gram stain procedure to make microorganisms, to make bacteria visible under microscope. Because bacteria are naturally transparent. If you place them on a slide, you won't be able to see them. We have to make them visible, give them some color. There are different methods we use to stain bacteria, different types of bacteria. But gram stain procedure is the most popular one. And the reason why it's so popular, uh, because uh, we also use gram stain procedure today to differentiate two main groups of bacteria gram positives from gram negatives. So how do we differentiate them? Gram positives on the microscope always appear purple after gram stain procedure. Gram negatives are pink or red after gram stain procedure. Why it happens? We're going to talk about it in our labs. Plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is the most inner layer of the cell envelope of gram positive and gram negative bacteria. The main function of plasma membrane is to control what comes in and what goes out of the cell. As you see from this picture, it is a bilayer and it's made of phospho lipids. So it's a phospholipid bilayer.
because it's made of phospholipids, it is lipid soluble. That means only lipid soluble molecules or hydrophobic molecules can go across this membrane directly into cytoplasm. But keep in mind, most nutrients are not lipid soluble, not hydrophobic. So how do they get into cytoplasm? They have to go through the holes in this membrane we call them pores. We call them pores. Pores are made of proteins. We call them porings or transporters. All right. Uh, so a uh, cell envelope covers uh, bacterial cytoplasm. Uh, let's talk about structure of bacterial cytoplasm next. You remember uh, that uh, bacteria are prokaryotes. It means they have no membrane bound nucleus. And all genetic information of bacterial cells is written down into circular chromosome and it's called nucleoid. So again, all essential information about bacterial cell is stored in nucleoid. A lot of bacteria have additional small circular chromosomes. We call them plasmids. Plasmids are used for not essential information of the cell. For example, some bacteria become resistant to antibiotics during their life, which is not essential information for the cell, right? That means that information is going to be written down into plasmids. Next structure, ribosomes. You remember the main function of ribosomes is to make proteins. All ribosomes are made of two parts. We call them subunits. Bacterial ribosomes are called 70S ribosomes. Human ribosomes are called 80S ribosomes. 80S ribosomes are larger in size. Why do we have to remember that? Because some antibacterials have affinity to 70S ribosomes. This is how those antibiotics kill bacteria. They destroy their ribosomes. But they have no affinity to 80S ribosomes, which is a good news for us because it means those antibiotics are not toxic to us. Endospores. Uh, we talked about endospores already today on this lecture and I told you uh, that uh, endospores are the most resistant, the most stable biological structures. And the, some bacteria, you have a couple uh, examples on this slide, for example, Clostridium species and uh, Bacillus anthracis. Um, they can form, those bacteria can form endospores when environment is not favorable for growth and replication. If environment is not favorable, then bacteria form endospore and basically go into resting, not active stage. When environment becomes favorable again, bacteria remove endospores from the surface and move into vegetative stage. Vegetative stage, it's a actively growing stage for bacteria.